Lisa, you, may, you can now share your screen okay. to begin the presentation. I request everybody to keep your, your, uh, your mics on mute. Uh, and if you have any questions or any suggestions or feedback, put it in the chat box and we'll take it up at the end of the presentation. Thank you so much. I've just started my program here. Yeah. Just... Why should I ring up anybody? I'm yeah? watching my... I'm a fool to ring her up. It's only at night. She'll ring Natasha, back. Natasha, yeah. I think you need to mute Who's everyone else. Good morning uh, to uh, everybody. Uh, thank you, Natasha, and uh, the other invitees to this session. I hope it is a uh, uh, profitable uh, moment for everybody to get acquainted, to get to know what is now the Museum of Christian Art, the new project that has been implemented, as Natasha said. Uh, in the recent years. Um, most, most of uh, the history of the museum uh, is related with the Kalbusko Benken Foundation. In fact, the idea was uh, presented to the Board of Trustees in the Gulbenkian Foundation in 1986. And we know that uh, a year before, delegates from Intact had, had been visited Goa and uh, had been in various churches and uh, private mansions to identify what was there uh, on the so-called Indo-Portuguese art. And then we, they realized that there was a, an immense, a huge, uh, uh, number of pieces, mm -hmm. and that uh, they realize they will need the particip participation of an institution with experience on this uh, area of uh, uh, art objects. So uh, the, pro the project took uh, several years, as it is usual. It usual happens because it's necessary. There are things to be accomplished. In this case, the statutes were, uh, the regulations had been settled, uh, the building had been found, and uh, the collection had been uh, uh, completed. The, at that time, uh, the Gobekan Foundation asked uh, a Portuguese curator, uh, that former, uh, former museum, uh, National Museum of Ancient Art, uh, where she worked until her 70s and then started collaboration with the foundation. She was uh, the most important person at that time in the Indo-Portuguese uh, art uh, specialist. So she, she went to Goa. She analyzed the work that Professor Titonio Tsouza had already done with um, making nine volume inventory of the pieces that he had measured them and uh, t t t took photos. And uh, Marie Elena uh, accepted some of the, the selection he has made, but she added new ones and finally the collection was settled. At the same time, the building we found was, uh, was on this because it's still there. It's the National Jesuit Seminary, the Fershaw Seminary. Uh, by, uh, from the 17th century. And uh, as Natasha also said, the museum has been inaugurated in 1994, uh, uh, having the coordination of the equipment and the design of the museological plan by, my, it was made by Marilena Mendes Pinto. A few years later, the 
there was a local a decision to shift the museum to Old Goa. Because as far as we know, the idea to put the, the museum in Rachel was the intention to, um, to have tourists coming from Old Goa because most of the tourism concentrates in the old uh, uh, covens and churches that had been recently been uh, uh, at that time classified by UNESCO. And the idea was to attract uh, tourists for other parts of the state. But it, it didn't work, so it, there was a decision to shift the museum to Santa Monica Convent, is that building that we are seeing now. And uh, the, the place uh, is the, uh, the available place is this building that uh, has a strange configuration because it, it is uh, the area of the convent when where nuns attended the mass and it had been uh, it suffered a fire on the 19th century uh, leaving uh, only those uh, columns i think they are 12 columns but natasha will know more than me i never counted unfortunately but uh, the, the, it was an empty space with not a huge area so the, there was a need to construct uh, construct um, a mezzanine to house the, all the collection. In fact, it has 25 meters height, and uh, the installation of works were uh, set, uh, established here in 2001 when the museum closed at Rachel. Uh, the foundation was asked to, but uh, it, at that time it was not decided to participate because in, in Rachel the project took uh, our uh, commitment, uh, intense commitment from the foundation. And I think, I don't know, but my idea is that no one makes a museum to last six years. So uh, we decided not to participate. And uh, uh, the, the, uh, the committee and Natasha was not working at that time in the museum. So the, the responsibles for the project in Santa Monica decided to um, follow the same program, the exhibition on museological program that was displayed in the threshold. Uh, but uh, the, the, in fact, it didn't work out because for on one, on one end, uh, there was a, a, a very different space. Uh, it, it has nothing to, to do with the Fashol uh, room where it had, the, the collection had been, had been held. Uh, this was aggravated because there were added more uh, uh, artworks that were kindly offered by private donors. And uh, in fact, in 30 years, much of uh, the practice in the museological field had, had changed and had been updated. Nevertheless, the foundation continued to be uh, co cooperating with the the Museum of Christian Art, because we published two books, one uh, about Rachel, and it was in Rachel, and the book Museum, Museum of Christian, uh, Museum uh, of uh, Sacred Art, Christian Art, in 2003. And uh, later it was revised and updated in 2011, which is now the present catalog available on the museum. And in, 90, in 2006, uh, the foundation also participated in the selection of the, uh, the present curator of the museum, which is Natasha, and in Budauer because she is doing a very important job in the museum. But uh, in fact, the pieces uh, suffered much from the shift. Uh, and uh, not only in the transport, but uh, also uh, the display in Rachel was not uh, uh, properly. Uh, yes, it was like that. Uh, there was not uh, there was not there, it was not possible to follow the best practice in terms 
of preventive conservation. And uh, the, uh, every PC uh, resents fr fr from that. But the textiles investments and these uh, um, works, these uh, objects, uh, textile objects, uh, were very damaged and suffered quite a lot of the, this uh, display. Uh, also, the building presented uh, uh, many problems, humidity and uh, the rain of the monsoon uh, came between the walls that link to the church. And um, there are also other disturbing elements that Rita will mention in the presentation she will do after, after me. Um, in fact, in 2011, uh, the then president of the Council of Anchor Foundation, Mr. Dr. Emilio Cuivilla, visit the Museum of Christian Art and uh, gave orders, if I say so, but he was very impressed with the, the state of the, the, the museum and the damage it made, it made to the pieces. So we encouraged the, an update uh, of the geological terms and the others that the committee and the authorities in Goa would, would feel that could be implemented. But it was on 2011, as I said, but from our point of view, there were required requirements that the foundation need to be assured for the success of the intervention. And this, and the, the, the most important condition at that time was that uh, the museum um, committee uh, would have to guarantee the uh, involvement of a local architect uh, that would be uh, responsible to complete uh, the, and making the implementation of the specifications that the project, the future project would define it. Uh, this took us a few times because, unfortunately, in 2011, the museum has been a robber, has suffered a robbery, and uh, which delayed the process. It was a very unhappy moment for the, the museum, but uh, after that, the, the Goa government provided uh, its support with a uh, a team of uh, securities, and uh, it, it was uh, after that that uh, Mocha announced to the Gulbenkian Foundation that uh, it already had uh, the collaboration of uh, the architect to work uh, strictly with us. Um, the first, then we, we could uh, implement the first visit to the foundation. So Rita and I uh, went in uh, the end of 2014. Uh, the aim was to get acquainted with what was the real state of the, the, the building, what were the needs. And even if understand what would be the what were the expectations of the committee and the practic practicality of uh, complying with them. Uh, then uh, we came, Rita and I, we, we worked on uh, the idea that uh, came out. And in February 2015, the project, preliminary project was submitted to the Board of Trustees in the Council of Inter Foundation, and it was approved. So in uh, March, the month later, we had the opportunity to present the, the preliminary project to the board, to the committee. Um, apart uh, the architectural, architectural and museographic specificities, I think I will explain uh, right, uh, uh, in a few minutes, uh, the, the more uh, problematic issue I thought at that time, it was not at all, is, it was that uh, we thought uh, changing, completely changing the, the layout. 
So the concept was a liturgical, the liturgical display. Uh, and we decided to abandon the, that, uh, that, uh, vis that program. Um, the, the, uh, and we decided to group uh, and display the pieces according to their types, sculpture on wood, sculpture on ivory, paintings, vestment, silvers, uh, gold pieces, and so on. Within the, each group, uh, the uh, chrono chronological sequence was followed, starting in the most ancient to the most uh, recent uh, manuf uh, manufacture, um, because we thought that more than a liturgical reading, we were interested in demonstrating the skill of Goan and Indian artists across the times. Uh, and the, the way how they assimilated the European models and how they expressed their interpretations of that uh, said uh, uh, models. At the same time, uh, it would, uh, as, as we, uh, as our ambition, it would um, um, allow uh, the the interpretation of the development uh, of the production of the, the, the pieces uh, and how they evolved across centuries follow uh, not only the local practices but also the progress of gener general art history models even uh, though with the time lag from the important patterns. The only exception that we considered was a showcase dedicated to, the, to San Francis Xavier, because we know the importance that the saint has in the state of Goa, not only for Christians, but for other communities. So in June 2015, uh, the final project was pre a pre pre public presentation um and uh, uh, which was very interesting because it um, yes thank you it um, uh, it, it uh, after the presentation people kept uh, 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 um, a very uh, yes thank you <laughs> uh, participation asking questions more simple questions and difficult questions. And there were two, two or three uh, voices uh, uh, discording and not agreeing with the project because they uh, expressed doubts and didn't understand how we would we manage to conciliate a modern project or modern design for the exhibition for uh, uh, ancient uh, artworks uh, kept in an ancient building, uh, on a building with more than uh, 100 years. But the general appreciation was extremely positive. Uh, and even uh, it was very interesting in the, after the, the presentation, the, there were approaches uh, informal approachings uh, regarding the possible cooperation of the foundation to private collectors that are concerned with the future of their uh, collections and the works that uh, we they have in their houses. But now Rita will uh, explain the more detail the project that was in this age and uh, as it was offered to the Montes Committee by the Charles Kovinker Foundation. Thank you. Thank you, Marie Fernanda. Hello, everyone. Uh, so uh, we thought it would, it could be interesting to have a brief look of the the project that we presented in in June in Goa, uh, the, the project that the Gulbenkian offered. So I'm going to get through the project very quickly, just and briefly to to have. Uh, a, a look of what we have done before we made the with the design project. So uh, of course the the first thing that we have done is to overlook to the the spaces that not just the space where the museum was held, but the the connect the spaces that were connected as the church or 
the, the courtyard and to understand what are, uh, were the uses of these spaces on the time, on that time. So, and to, after understanding what, how the spaces were used, we needed to, uh, to identify the problems and try to resolve them because the problems were not just related to the display. It was uh, the, the use of the space that needed to be upgraded. upgraded. So uh, as the first look we, in, on, in, on, in the courtyard, there are the two constru independent constructions, the ticket office and the cafeteria that are in the same space. They just suffered uh, 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 light uh, remodelation. I don't know if you say that, but they are renewed. Um, the sanitary facilities were uh, in a very temporary, it, it looked like they were in a temporary uh, construction and they didn't give answer to the needs of the visitors of the museum. Uh, there was in this, on the side of the courtyard, a storeroom that was not used in the best way because the space was uh, empty. Then the entrance of the museum, uh, the first uh, understanding that we had when we entered the space is that the first, the doors were all always uh, opened. What th that, first of all, the, didn't allow the control of the temperature. So the temperature outside was almost all the time the, the same temperature inside the museum. And of course we know that uh, piece, pieces and objects of art cannot live in the same uh, temperature in, and humidity and to, to have these variations. And uh, because this building, it, it, the museum was constructed and installed in a museum that has a previous use that was not this one, we had many, many windows that had too much and uh, uh, natural light. Then the office uh, at that time, as Maria Fernanda mentioned, was inside the, the, the exhibition space. It was not answering the needs of the, the office and it was not at all answering the needs of the exhibition space that cannot, of course, have this kind of uh, disruptions uh, inside the space. Um, so we, uh, then the store, the shop of the, 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 the museum was and is on the bottom part of the, the museum. There is a space that is on the, the side, but the display that was current, that was used on that uh, time was not the best display for uh, a store and the lighting of the, the space was not uh, the correct one. Regarding the area of the permanent exhibition, as Maria Fernanda uh, said and mentioned already, there was the leaking of the roof. During the monsoons, there was uh, rain inside the museums. There were containers that needed to be put on the floor to contain the, the water that, it, that was falling. The moisture uh, on the walls was a permanent uh, 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 situation. And is, as, is, if it's not just because it's not beautiful to see it in a space like this. It was terrible for the objects that were displayed inside the museum. Uh, as I said before, as this space was not, the architecture of the space was not thought to be, to, to, to be a museum. So the, the, of course the use of the space as it was when the nuns use it to, to, to attend the mass. Um, you can see that the number of windows that were here were, uh, you know, uh, um, were not, it's not good for uh, a museum space. Um, the, the general lighting that was uh, designed when the shift of, from Rochelle to, to Old Goa, when it was designed by the, the, the architect, it was not the best light to, 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 to a museum. The display and the equipment was weak. The display was very weak in terms of the construction. Uh, there was no security uh, uh, lockers in the, the vitrines. The, there was no control of temperature of, uh, or humidity. So of course the display of the pieces were in a very uh, weak, uh, uh, manner. The floor that was 
chosen, that was uh, the choice on that time to the museum was very, had a very big presence in terms of the visual effect of, for the visitors. And it, uh, when you enter the space, you, you would be confused with the design of the floor and the display of the pieces. So this was something that we, from the beginning, we decided that it needed to, to change. Um, another problem that exists in many public spaces is the, 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 the access to the upper or the lower floors for uh, people that needs, that has some reduced uh, mobility. And there was a ramp for the lower floor, but there was no access to the upper floor. The reserves of the, the museum, uh, they were inside, a, 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 it looked like a provisional facility inside the exhibition space. First of all, of course, reduce, that, that reduces the, the spaces for, to exhibit the, the pieces and it didn't answer to the, the needs, of course, of, of uh, uh, storage. So after uh, having the reading of the spaces, of the uses of the spaces and of the problems of the spaces, we made the proposal. The proposal, um, as Maria Fernanda referred, there was the need of having an architect that, to work with us, a local architect, was Erminio Ribeiro. And uh, it was decided that Arminio would do the proposal for the outside constructions of the museum, meaning that the, the toilet or the, the, the sanitary facilities and the, the office space were to be relocated outside and the, all this project was designed by Arminio. So I don't have it here in the proposal, of course, but you can visit the, when you visit the museum, you will be able to see every uh, new construction. So for the, the first intervention that we were, that we proposed was a wind protect, protection door, meaning that we would double the, the entrance doors to allow us to enter one space, close the door and enter then the, the, the space to control the natural light and to control the difference of, of temperature. This is very, very important for a museum that wants to be contemporary and that wants to answer to the needs of the, the preventive conservation of the, 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 the objects. And of course, this will uh, of, uh, as well reduce the entry of natural light. The, um, as I said, we one of our worries was to answer to the problem of uh, uh, allowing people with with uh, physical uh, uh, mobility problems to 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 uh, get to to be I, sorry to get to the, the the first floor. So in our proposal, we designed a, a, a lifting platform that will allow people to get to the, the upper floor and will allow as well the movement of pieces with uh, bigger scale to, uh, to be shift from one floor to the other. Unfortunately, during the process, this uh, lifting platform was not able to be uh, built. And we uh, give an answer to that problem with uh, a chair that will be shown uh, a little bit uh, to, in, the, in the, the presentation, in front of the presentation. And we, the, the, um, we proposed as well as a welcoming uh, space, a counter uh, that would have the donation box and uh, the catalog of, of the exhibition and the owner, the visitor's book that will end with uh, the introduction text that will introduct, make the introduction to the visitors to the museum and as well a cloakroom that was that what, that need to have uh, an existence before with the lockers to, to the visitors. Then uh, the shop. What we have done is like just a lift, a lifting of the the of the the, the store. We design a, a, min, a minimal. It's like a, a, a equipment that will allow the shop to sell whatever objects they they want to sell in a minimal way and not make any disruption with the display of the museum. We did uh, as well a new lighting project for the, the shop. The 
permanent uh, exhibition. So here it's, it's important, first of all, to understand that we tried as much as we could to preserve the building, the, the history of the building, and to make surrogic uh, um, uh, changes. And one of the changes that we made uh, was a proposal of building, again, something that has an history on this space, that was the floor where the nuns would attend the mass. The mass. And so what we have done is that we did uh, uh, propose a viewing platform that would be more or less like a balcony that would be constructed over the pillars that existed before. And that would allow the visitors to go up and to see the, the church as the nuns would see uh, the church before. And of course would allow as well them to see, to have an overbird view of the, the museum uh, as well. Then, all the, the lighting, the, there was a, a project for the lighting for the whole museum, general lighting and uh, individual lighting. The general lighting would come from the ceiling, pending from the ceiling, and uh, the, the directional lighting would allow us to light the vitrines and the, 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 you know, the, the details that we wanted to light. The, the visit of the museum is suggested to, to begin on the first floor. What we have done is that we kept the, the design of the balconies that already existed. We changed the materials of the, the balconies. We put it glasses and, and metal sheets to minimal the, 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 the impact they have on the visitors. And we proposed uh, the installation of small vitrines uh, with their back to the open space, meaning that the, the, the vitrines will face the walls. So the visitors will cross these corridors and will be able to see the pieces without the disruption of the, 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 the rest of the building. On the small balconies that you see, we propose the installation of big plinths where the big wooden sculptures would rest. They will face the corridors, but they will face their back to the empty, the, the empty space, allowing people from the, the, the ground floor to already have some idea of what was happening on the upper floor. And, but on the upper floor, this uh, will you know, set the way of the path. The um, furniture would be installed in platforms in very specific uh, um, parts, and the paintings would be displayed uh, in, uh, uh, on the upper floor and on the ground floor, depending on how it would make sense uh, on the display. The museographic project was all detailed and thought to these pieces. So this is a privilege to design a museum where the collection is already de de decided. And what we have done is that the small sculptures, sculptures would be in installed in vitrines in which vitrine one shelf would be for one piece or for a set of pieces, but that shelf is for that piece and not, not any, any other piece. So you can see that the pieces would fly almost inside each vitrine, allowing the visitor to have the privilege to see each piece for itself. The medium scale uh, sculptures would, would be rested in, uh, as it was big plinths with uh, uh, glass protection. Then we have the ivories with the same uh, display as the small wooden sculptures and the crucifix that has their own there's not even one shelf. They are just, you know, flying, almost flying inside the, the vitrine. On the, the, um, the ground floor, so the ground floor has, uh, it has a very architectural presence because when you enter is when you see the whole ceiling to the top of the, the roof. So um, we try to differentiate the intervention on the ground floor uh, in a more contained uh, way, creating um, autonomous space uh, that were marked with uh, some spot lighting uh, that would be direct uh, to the pieces. And um, the central space of the museum was left almost empty. Uh, so we could have the advantage of see the, the height of the ceiling to the roof. 
uh, and to even try to because the museum is not just the are not it's not just the pieces it's what the space is so we wanted to preserve the space and to allow the visitors to leave the space as it is so we left it almost emptied and we highlighted this uh, emptiness with some selected pieces that would set the rhythm of you know of the path of the the visitors um, Covering the, so this is one of the pieces that is central to the space. Covering the, the, the pillars on the, I'm just going back to show you the, again, the central part, covering the pillars that have a very disruptive uh, presence inside the museum. We constructed a huge vitrine that is closed and we just opened three niches facing on each side facing the central space where the most valuable valuable uh, pieces of the museum are installed and behind these niches we have two corridors where we displayed or the the metal pieces or the textiles or and we have other uh, sets as the san francis or the the furniture liturgic furniture, but uh, these corridors allow the visitor to feel intimate to the pieces and to have a sense that we have sections that are very clear inside the museum. Um, these were the, 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 first, the, the options that we presented in our uh, presentation. Another uh, matter that was very, very important in our project was the new equipment. Uh, this was a, a very, you know, in terms of the the how how much it costs to a museum. Of course, the the equipment has a very very big uh, um, weight in the in the budget. But we knew that if we wanted to change the museum and to make the museum this muse mock the museum to be, you know, as the the more modern museums uh, are installed, we knew that the, the equipment was uh, very important. So what we have done is that we, 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 may, uh, we opened a competition uh, to, uh, to have the, the, the most value in, uh, uh, presentation of equipments possible to, and what the, the, the rules for this competition were, uh, of course, that we needed to be able to control uh, passively, the, the 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 moisture inside the, the vitrines. So we have shelves where the the cassettes of uh, art sorb are are located. So we can uh, have moisture level indicators inside the vitrines. All these glasses are are security glasses, so they are have security protection, and they have as well UV light protection and interior LED lighting to individual. The, the lighting of each piece. So uh, in the end of the presentation, what we have done is that we did uh, present some 3D modeling of the space. I would invite you when possible to, if you can, to have in mind these uh, images that I'm going to show you, and then to visit the museum and try to see if they are close to the, the, the real construction or not. I can explain you for mm -hmm. the ones that uh, didn't have time to visit the museum. This is an over like a bird view of the space where you can see pending from the ceiling, the structures of the general lighting. And you can see the viewing platform that I uh, described before. So this is like the balcony where you can see the church. Uh, we were able to take out the mesh that was used to separate the space from the church to the museum. So you have an incredible view from the museum to the church. Um, you can see here how the stairs that uh, are used to get to the viewing platform and have a, a you know, uh, an idea of how the vitrines would be in terms of display. This is the first floor. This is the ground floor, the central space with the pelican and the center, Saint Ursula. And in the niches, you can see the pieces that I referred to before. This is one of the corridors with the metal pieces and the other corridor on the other side with the, the books, the, the textiles, the St. Francis uh, vitrine. 
And this, this was the presentation we have done. Just one more thing before I give the word to Marie Fernanda again, just talking about the reserves. As I said before, one of the problems is that the reserves were in a construction inside the exhibition space. So what we have done is that we proposed the construction of a space that could meet the conservation requirements and that could be easily constructed because we needed to construct this, to build this space before the dismantling of the, the museum for the construction. So we did made uh, um, a, a project of a space that could be, and that was done at the beginning and where the reserves now uh, exist. Maria Fernanda, back to you. Okay, thank you, Rita. Uh, so it was this project, as Rita just explained, that uh, was, <clears throat> sorry, was followed by other components the project for the construction of the office and other external structures that were made by Herminio Ribeiro. And both of these components were part of an overall uh, refurbishment project that the committee submitted to the Indian government authorities for the, uh, and started the campaign of the, the fundraising. The, um, then in uh, November 2017, uh, the, the, the fund was uh, granted for, from the various uh, donors and the, the museum was dismantled. As I mentioned, the works of art uh, were kept in the reserves uh, with uh, total security and uh, as far as possible with the temperature and the humidity control. And uh, the, the museum closed uh, temporarily in November. Um, Rita, please. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so this sorry, was sorry. The, the, the reserves as uh, they were. Uh, in this uh, phase, the intact that was always uh, committed with the museum started uh, their work on the conservation and uh, the um, an intervention intervention in the artworks, making uh, restoration, cleaning, and consolidation. Uh, there is another example, another uh, example of the the works that they have do, do, done. Um, and uh, the, the, at the same time, the building was subject to structural uh, intervention with the construction. This is not the, the simulated images that Rita showed, but I think they are almost equal. This is the, the real viewing platform and uh, the, the, the repairs of the problems of the filtrations of the rain and the humidity and, the, uh, and so on had been uh, done. The roof was uh, has been changed, and uh, these all these involved various and long discussions with uh, different representatives and experts, uh, representatives of the suppliers, uh, the lighting. The, the vitrines, the, 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 the supplier of the, 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 the plinths, the vases. We went to workshops uh, to choose the best uh, carpenters, the best uh, uh, metal suppliers, the stones, the stones to cho choose the stones for, to be used in the plinths. Uh, and uh, we, we we have considered different alternatives to replay this, uh, also the, the lift for people with the disabled and, and they had several meetings with uh, different uh, proposal, proposals. But uh, in fact, and until the last hour, we didn't have uh, an idea what could be done because as Peter said, the, the beautiful, uh, project uh, lift that she included in the project was not possible to 
to to to consider. At the same time, the, the, the work with the intact requires uh, pontual uh, sometimes uh, answers that uh, surprises that the where artworks show that had to have answers and have discuss had discussions with all of us to 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 give the best answer for the pieces and to guarantee that they are kept in the best conditions. Meanwhile, the beginning of the construction of the equipment started in Slovenia, and in in the fi final nine, uh, the nineteen two thousand nineteen. The, the the things were shipped to Goa, and uh, the procedures that the customer was my very big concern due to the uh, former experience on that field that the foundation had. But uh, it was it worked uh, very efficiently. Uh, we also had meetings with the director of the customer. To, to before the material arrives to guarantee that he was cooperating with MOCA, the Museum of Christian Art, uh, in a quick time because we were planning to uh, have everything done in February where, when our president of the Republic of Portugal would visit the museum. In fact, he visited the museum and he, 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 he just saw this as uh, in, in, uh, in process of gathering the pieces. Uh, and the, the, the installation, we went there in March. It was not possible to, to have the, that, uh, the collection uh, prepared for inaugurating in February. We went in March and uh, started, uh, this is the, the store, we started uh, to uh, uh, the installation of the artworks when suddenly the nightmare arrived and we interrupted the, the, the process and the, our work and we had to come back to, to Portugal. Um, the reopening uh, will, uh, the, the museum finally managed to reopen with a part, a little selection of pieces just to keep the the museum open to the public because in two years in two years it was very problematic not to to have something to 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 show to the public and to, to keep the, the the doors closed so we finally in may last may we managed to start the installation with the uh, new, uh, always new answers to 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 show to, to and give response to some details that we never have seen before. That's always like that, and uh, the circumstances of the work was really uh, funny because this uh, is our uh, Portuguese technician that went with us to. To install the object, and in the same corridor, at the same time, there were two members of the staff. One is in, from Intat, and the other is the assistant of Natasha. And while he was dying with the hot, she was dying with cold. So it was very funny to 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 do the process. And uh, when it comes to work, uh, there is no hierarchy. Everybody has to put the ants in what is needed. And uh, the, the, the artwork is for everybody. This is the corridor of the precious metals that Rita mentioned. And now we are going to see a set of uh, slides that show the installation process. This is the paintings. The, the, here it was uh, in the between the installation, the committee was uh, coming to see how the work was progressing. And uh, they, I think they, they went out to confident with the final work. This is what was the solution for for the allow for allowing people 
to go upstairs because in the, the museological vis, uh, project, what we envisaged was to start the, and this is suggested to the visitor, uh, even though the people do what they want to do, but we suggest that they start the visit from the upper floor and where are the paintings and sculptures uh, and let's say like these the, the because the, the not so much valuable uh, objects because uh, i have the idea that when we go to a museum if you are not an expert you and when you come back you retain in your mind the last thing you have seen so the, the, the ground floor has extraordinary pieces uh, as the upper floor, but they are more impacting on people. And so I, I think it would be a very good uh, idea to return after a, a museum visit. So when uh, climbing up the, the stairs, there is the corridor with the paintings and the wood sculptures. Rita, please. This is another view the, on the opposite side. This is what Rita mentioned, uh, to put the big uh, pieces uh, in between the, the vitrines. And this is the other corridor with the ivories. As I said before, with the uh, following a chronological uh, display, this is the, and this is under the viewing platform. The museum uh, implemented a restoration of the frescoes of the this door that links to the the church. And when we climbed, uh, there is people as the as the opera have the opportunity to have this. Uh, I think extraordinary view of the church facing directly to the main altar. That was the same view that Nanz had when going there. And this is the view for the other part, for the museum. This is the view from, from the platform. In the ground floor, we have the corridor uh with the um, the uh, vestments uh, on the top that uh, thank you on the top there is the only exception to the this chronological and uh, the typing type selection that is the vitrine mm -hmm. with the pieces uh, related to saint francis xavier and in the end there is the church furniture and this is the metal, the precious metals uh, corridor. In the central nave, there are, as Rita also mentioned, the iconic artworks, which is the Tabernacle Pelican in um, uh, silver, uh, wood and silver, uh, wood covered with silver. It is an extraordinary uh, piece that uh, has the the interesting view that it came from the convent of Santa Monica itself. And uh, on the six niches, there are the most impactant and invaluable pieces uh, in silver. And on, uh, on the, that panel that was constructed to uh, disguise, let's say like this, disguise the door that links to the church, we put an extraordinary bar relief of Santa Ursula and the 11,000 virgins, which from the, both pieces from the 17th century. Um, in the Mocas upgradation uh, project, we intended to respond to the expectations of different kinds of public. The showcases where the objects are now displayed and the new layout. Uh, were, were designed um, in order to provide a coherent interpretation and a clear overview of the history expressed by each piece, by each artwork. 
and uh, uh, we at the Carlos Trovenger Foundation feel uh, great satisfaction of having carried out this work with uh, which secures, I am I'm sure, effective conditions for the safeguarding of the object. Uh, the contemporary structure designed in the project um, will facilitate the daily routine of best practice practices in the field of humidity, temperature, and lighting control that we hope will contribute to preserve the collection for many, many decades yet. Thank you. I... Thank you so much, uh, Marie Fernanda and Rita, for this very uh, detailed exploratory presentation on the problems, the proposed solutions, and then finally it all materializing into a, a real project. Um, I would like to ask Heta to now. Just a minute. Yes, Heta, I've unmuted you. So you can start the uh, session uh, from the Q&A point of view. And I will ask the participants, if you have any question, uh, please put it in the chat box and Heta will take it up for you. Thank you. Maria Fernando and Rita, thank you so much for this wonderful presentation. Very enlightening. As they say in India that we are the sum total of the people we meet and the friends we make. And I've really understood it a little bit better today. Thank you so much for explaining in such lucidity and clarity what all goes into the making of museums, in general also and in particular MOCA. So thank you. And I'm speaking on behalf of my committee members as well as my own personal self. So since there are no questions yet in the chat box, I would like to ask both of you or either of you, if you have any anecdotes to share when you were working on the museum, any anecdotes, any interesting stories, anything funny? I don't know if Rita wants to speak first. No, Maria Fernanda, please. <laughs> No, I think there is, it's not an, an, an anecdote, but it's uh, some uh, problems that arrive that, that the, when they happen, we stay in a, the high state of stress, but when they are resolved, we on, can only uh, laugh. And it was the, 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 what happened with the vitrines. There were two vitrines that were misplaced in the in the in the upper floor and uh, one of them uh, uh, only when uh, co confirming that the, the labels were well put that we saw no because it's not can be this this between is not not belongs to here belongs to the other to to the other other place so but these are uh, common uh, issues that arrive on the, this kind of process uh, that makes us very stressed. And after that, now we can laugh yeah. of that moment. Uh, that, uh, the, the most important, uh, uh, what I feel in this uh, project, uh, it was very easy to comply with it and to accomplish the end. Because um, we, we, we knew each other for a long time. And uh, when making the installation, we felt the happiness in people. Mm -hmm. So it provided, it gives us a extremely gratitude for uh, accepting this. And what, it was very easy. The, the committee always accepted our suggestions at one point. Rita intended to change the, the verandas 
and uh, I was uh, when she <laughs> she presented the idea to Mr. Nashi. I was wondering, oh my God, what is going to happen? Because we know that there are always limits in the budget, uh, budgetary uh, areas. But uh, he immediately accepted the idea, and uh, it was uh, very reward rewarding and uh, working in this project because the people were very easy to 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 cooperate and uh, I think that we learned from it was an interchange of knowledge between the two teams from different parts. Thank you for saying that. Vita, you have an anecdote to share? Uh, anyway, I can just share that the language is always uh, an anecdote when we are talking in English, Portuguese, uh, Indy, uh, uh, Konkani, it's, it's very, very funny because we have teams that are made for people that come from all over India and uh, from Portugal. So we try to arrange words to say things that we don't know how to say in the different language. So it was always very, very funny and it would make the team even more, you know, more cohesive and uh, more relaxed because we were almost of us were on the same page because we did have to communicate and sometimes we didn't know how to express ourselves in the you know with a word that we really wanted to say and sometimes that was very very funny and yes maria fernanda says said all oh, it was an amazing experience in terms of even in terms of personal experience uh, I say to me, and I think to Marie Fernanda as well, because we grew with this uh, with this experience, and we tried to do our best. It was very demanding, but it in the end was very rewarding. So yes, um, I'm very happy with the result. Thank you, Rita. There's a question here. Hello, ma'am. Can we get a book on Museum of Christian Art in Goa? It's from Snehal. I think uh, I'll have to answer that one. Snehal, yes, we have just released a, a new book on the 100 iconic objects from the Museum of Christian Art. So do drop us an email and we'll share with you the details and you can place an order with us for the book and get yourself a copy. Thank you, Natasha. There's another question from Hariara. What pieces from the museum called out to you the most? Uh, Maria Fernanda, Rita, either of you can answer that. Uh, okay. Please, Rita. Do you want me to start? I can. I will Stay talk about a, a piece that Maria Fernanda already mentioned, the pelican that uh, was, it is an, an outstanding uh, piece, uh, not just for the scale and for the shape and for the value that it, it you know, screams uh, the piece, it's, uh, it's so, so beautiful. And the impact that the piece has inside the, 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 the building, it's incredible. So for me, the, uh, there's many others that I would, I could uh, uh, mention, but the, pal the, the, the tabernacle uh, uh, pelican is for me the, the most uh, outstanding piece of this collection. Thank you. Thank you, Rita. Maria Fernanda, you have a favorite piece, something that turned uh, out to you? No, not favorite. Uh, yes, I have one favorite. <laughs> I, I used to say that is my sozia. I don't know how is the word in English, Natasha. Sozia, how we say, you say it. The people that like that looks like you, but, but I would like to refer to at, le at least three pieces that are of uh, um, that illustrate the quality of the Indian artists and the detail of their production, which is the uh, Infant Jesus, the Good Shepherd, which is a piece for, from the 17th century. Also, um, the other uh, baby Jesus, the savior of the, not baby Jesus, Jesus, savior of the world in ivory, which is extraordinary in the piece. And also Nirmala Mata, which was an interpretation uh, for, for local, uh, which is a mix of two cultures, two 
it's so different cultures. It's very, very interesting. But the piece that I was to say that is my portrait, <laughs> it's, uh, you are going to laugh, is the bust of the Virgin Mary that is on the upper floor. <laughs> Natasha yeah. is smiling because Natasha feels she's so ugly. But I <laughs> think she, she, is, yeah. she has the uh, typical uh, iconography uh, of the uh, Indian production, which is the air uh, uh, along the back, uh, the expressive eyes, and all the repaints that uh, uh, local uh, the people used to do, the, which I think is a way of uh, making the images uh, continuous new. So they paint uh, uh, over the, the, the paint, they paint over the previous painting and it, that that boost of the Virgin um, is very evident, this practice. So I think it is uh, this, these four pieces for me, not, not my favorites because it is hard to choose just one, apart the Pelican, which is really very impactant, or the, the, the Bahadiv of Santa Ursula. But these are very specific uh, Indian uh, Goan production, which is illustrate the influence that the uh, local artists that already were there when the Portuguese arrived, uh, all they uh, correspond to the commissions they received from the uh, Europeans, in this case, the Portuguese. What a wonderful answer. Thank you. I'm sure Haryana will be pleased with that. There's Nilman Kulkarni who says, what are the prospects and plans for enlarging the collection at the museum? Uh, that, that I Natasha. think Natasha is the right person to, to answer. Yeah. So um, Nirmal, to answer your question, um, yes, there's always uh, prospects to enlarge the collection. This is the permanent collection that will be on display. But yes, the reserve collection can definitely grow and uh, with similar pieces, of course, uh, from our churches uh, and from families, we, are, we continue to accept donations of uh, Indo-Portuguese pieces and hopefully in the future we might also enlarge the collection to embrace uh, other Christian art from, uh, you know, more contemporary. But at this moment, yes, we continue to get smaller donations of um, a single ivory piece from a family uh, home, uh, from a family altar, and we, we do accept. But the permanent collection will remain uh, as the new upgraded museum uh, is uh, done and it's complete. But the reserve collection gives you many more opportunities for research of the pieces, for uh, temporary exhibitions. So yes, we plan on enlarging the collection and we will continue to reach out to people who would like to donate pieces of Indo-Portuguese art to us, yes. Thank you, Natasha. Uh, there's a beautiful comment, a note of appreciation from Dr. Rui Villar. I'll read it out to you. I would like to congratulate the committee, Natasha, Maria Fernanda, Rita, and all those that made possible this fantastic and remarkable renewal of MOCA, and thank you for this presentation. Thank you, Dr. Rui Villar. I would also like to thank personally you. thank Dr. Rui Villar uh, uh, for joining us today for this session and for yes. being there right from the beginning uh, of this project and giving us all the support from the Kalu School Banking Foundation as well. Uh, you know, it gave us the strength to, to go on and, and uh, execute a project of this, of this scale. And we look forward to your visit to, to MOCA uh, in Goa soon. Thank you so much, Dr. Vigilar. Thank you, Dr. All our participants, uh, we we like to invite you to visit the museum. Uh, it's recently upgraded. Some of you must have visited uh, the museum already since the opening. But do come back with your friends, with your family, at every opportunity you'll get. We are always happy to see you again. Thank you, Natasha. One last question from me personally. Was there any piece that shouted out to you and said, India, India, India? Uh, those, those three that I mentioned, uh, 
and the expression of the burst of the Virgin. I think that it has everything. It has the the artwork, the the artistic involvement, and the repaints, the 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 procedure of conservation as people repaint because they think they, they conservate the pieces. So it has everything. It has the, the, those beautiful long hair, those expressive eyes. And uh, even though it is not the most beautiful piece for a museum, it uh, displays, uh, displays the, the practice uh, all over the, the centuries that uh, I, th I think still is the, the practice in the... In, uh, in different uh, objects, not in the sacred images, for, of course, I understand, I don't know. But uh, I would say that, one. but there are, it's, it's hard to, 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 to choose one because, for example, the, uh, the Jesus, the Good Shepherd is uh, an amazing, amazing piece with uh, so detailed uh, artistic work, and so characteristic of Goa, not only not only not of India, but ex expressly expressly from Goa. In different ways, as if I had to choose two, I would choose these two for different reasons: the Good Shepherd and the Burst of the Virgin. Thank you so much, Mario and Rita. Thank you, Dr. Vilar, Natasha. You want to. Say a word of thanks on behalf of Mocha. But before Natasha and may I say just a word. For me, I, I, I in my name, I, I think Rita agrees. I have to thank everybody, as I already mentioned, for the way they, they uh, li have listened to us. And also thank to Dr. Huvilar. It was, uh, for me, I, I had the privilege of working directly with him. It was all, and it is, it still is, an inspiration in my way of uh, doing things. Thank you, all of you. Thank you both for giving us a very enlightening talk. And thank you all the participants for joining us today. Do come and visit the museum on behalf of the Museum Managing Committee. And uh, on behalf of Goa, I welcome you to the Museum of Christian Art. Thank you once again to my very dear friends, uh, uh, Rita, Marie Fernanda, and Heta. Uh, you know, it's been uh, a long time in the making, the museum, and now, of course, sharing this uh, project with so many of our participants who wanted to know, many of uh, some of them who have come here and want to know what it was like, who have not seen the museum today. So, Rita, your, your presentation showed a little bit of what it was earlier and, and the transformation and the, the, the thinking, the ideas that went into the, 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 the new plan for the upgraded museum. So thank you so much for putting it all uh, in, a, in a very detailed but uh, simple, comprehensive presentation. So thank you, both of you. Thank you so much. And Heta, thanks for always being there to support us in all our uh, events and activities and always motivating us to do more and better. Thank you so much. Thank you for being a uh, part of the session with us. And thank you to all our lovely participants who have been attending many of our sessions in the previous year and uh, uh, even coming to the museum. And it's very encouraging to have uh, all of you with us. Thanks once again. Have a lovely weekend. Thank you.